Okay, so we'll begin uh, videotaping. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be uh, the Excel 2 class. Um, in Excel 1, we did all the, you know, quite basics. We found out how to just move around the cells, the uh, spreadsheet, how to make a little table, apply this, you know, customization of, you know, bold and italics and making these lines and things like that. And we did, we just got to the basics of uh, functions. We could just do a quick review of a function. If we wanted to add up, you know, the net sales in this uh, practice data column, any function that we want to do just begins with an equal sign. Um, we can just do kind of basic math in a function, but if we want to use an Excel function, we give the name of the function. In this case, just sum, which is a basic function. And then with any function, you've got to open and close parentheses. And inside that, you put kind of the inputs to the function, what that function is going to use uh, to make its calculation. So in this case, we would uh, click and drag on, you know, the table column that we want. Maybe we want to get all the net sales. We could just close the parentheses. Uh, that just autofilled by accident. Uh, but you can see we got the, uh, the total of that uh, column. And you can see it matches what I have down below. So that's kind of the basics of uh, functions. Um, and you have the basic functions like sum, count, get the average, get the minimum and the maximum. Uh, but once you have those down, if you wanna really do stuff in Excel, uh, you kind of have to go to the uh, 2.0 functions. Um, and those really let you do a lot of, you know, conditional selective analysis. You know, what if we wanna ask questions like, instead of just summing all the net sales, what if we want to do something like ask how many uh, net sales of only in this sample data, the employees at the Midwest branch, or maybe only uh, the sales of the people in the East branch and the Midwest branch um, above the age of you know, 50, something like that. So with these kind of advanced functions we'll look at today, we can ask those specific questions um, with what we'll look at today. So we'll do a, we'll do a couple uh, things as we get going. We'll look at a couple things, get to those kind of conditional functions, um, and then a couple odds and ends. And then if we have time at the end, um, I also want to show us, we can see the tabs at the bottom look a little bit out of sequence, and that's just because I moved what we usually begin with to the end, just in case we don't have enough time. But what I want to end with, if we don't have enough time, is taking a look at like some, some sample raw data and seeing how we can quickly make that into, you know, a nice table like this. If we uh, begin a spreadsheet in Excel, maybe we'll always be in Excel and the table will be nicely designed as we need it. But maybe we have some data in like a Microsoft document or something else. Maybe this came from a CSV file. How can we uh, take raw data and make it nice in Excel usable uh, with just a couple of clicks? We might see this and not know how to do that just yet. You might think this is a bit ugly and the best and only way would just kind of be to manually separate out the name, the branch and the age into three columns. But we'll see at the end of the class, hopefully, even with data this messy, we can fix it up and separate it out in just a couple clicks and a couple uh, fancy tools. So that's kind of the end of the class if we have time. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into uh, page one, which is tab three on the bottom and we'll get going. Uh, yeah, so the uh, data we'll be using today is just some made up uh, like sample sa sales data. And you can see we have a lot of items uh, not too many to make it unmanageable, but we also have a lot of columns and that's going to let us use those selective functions to ask all kinds of questions and not just do the basic stuff like adding all the net sales, those basic functions. So if we take a look at the practice side, we'll do a couple things on uh, page one. And uh, to begin, I want to talk about uh, making uh, Excel drop down lists like this. If we just click on this cell, we can see we get all the names um, from this table. And that lets us uh, easily uh, select a data point that we then want to 
calculate a second data point. So two things we'll look at this drop down list, and then this is called an X lookup function. And it's basically doing uh, the, the equivalent of saying, let me find Alex Kant in this table, or maybe I'll switch it to Kevin Jones. And then it's gonna look up his net sales and we can see that matches. And we can see if we switch it, this also is gonna match. And if we want to, we can just change this to, uh, to look like that. We just have to apply some uh, type style to that. Uh, but that's the two tools that we'll uh, begin with today. So to make a uh, drop down list like this, it's going to be a type of data validation. Basically what it's doing is if I try to type, you know, something else in this, Excel is going to say, I'm not allowed to do that because I set data validation rules in this Excel spreadsheet. I only want this cell to be some specific values, those being the names in that column. Uh, so to make any type of data validation, we'll look up at the uh, Excel ribbon on the top. Last time we looked a lot at the uh, home tab, which is just kind of a lot of styling things, kind of visuals. Uh, but today we'll be going to the uh, data tab and this lets us do a lot of fancy stuff. And we can see one of the buttons is just called data validation. That's what we want. And you can see the image kind of tells what it's gonna do. It's gonna allow you to um, set which values a cell can take and which is not allowed. And this is useful when you set up a whole table, if you will be constantly adding data to that. If I come into this table every day and add new salespeople, new sales, I don't wanna add any uh, bad data by accident. So I might set data, data validation rules on this table to say like, this column can only be text. This column can only be uh, numbers like that. This is gonna be text as well. I could say this column is only allowed uh, dates and all those kinds of things. So I'm going to click on the cell that I want to apply the data validation to. Uh, in this case, just this one. If I wanted to apply it to a whole column, like we just said, like if I want to make this all dates, I would click the whole column. But I'm just going to click this cell and go to data validation. Uh, a couple of things we need to just kind of set in this tool. This is when we can choose kind of which type of value is allowed. And we can see the kind of things we just talked about. We can say this cell is only allowed to get a date. We could do only a time, only uh, some text of some specific length, custom if you want to get it advanced. And you can see even when you do specific things, you can even validate it uh, beyond that. So you can only have a date between the beginning and end date, things like that. But we want, uh, pretty simple. It's just the one called list. We want to make a drop down list. So we just click on list. We don't need to do anything with this middle one. It's grayed out. And in this bottom one, the only thing we need to do left is just give the kind of data that that list is going to be populated from. So I'll click on this box. And then just like I'm making a function, I can now click outside the box. I'm going to drag my mouse to get my whole list. You can see I'm going A2 all the way to um, A43 at the bottom. And then I can just click OK. And now we can see when I click on this cell, I get that same little drop down button like I see above in the uh, demo. And then I get the same thing as above. Now I can only choose uh, the names in that column. And if I try to do anything else, like say I accidentally put the date in this column instead of the name, it's gonna prevent me from doing that. So this is a good tool to know, uh, to kind of set things up and keep the Excel data uh, clean like that. And we can see if we do something like alphabetize this list, or maybe we add new uh, names to this list at the bottom, depending on how we set up uh, the list, this is also gonna change. So now this is alphabetized. If I came in and added some new uh, names to this, they would keep populating this drop down as I change my data. So I always find the drop down list to be uh, quite a cool Excel uh, tool that we can uh, use. Uh, and then the second thing, now that we can kind of kind of choose people in kind of like a presentation side of Excel, we might have this on a separate sheet away from the raw data. 
So we can do kind of quick lookups to see how my salespeople have been doing. So I could say, let me look up Emma Davidson and get quickly um, how many sales that she has without going into the table, doing it alphabetically, and then finding Davidson in the Ds. Now Excuse we have, me? yeah. Is that drop down became uh, alphabetical by default, or can we make alphabetical? It's not alphabetical by uh, default. It's the same sequence as the data that you put into it. So if we look, uh, it begins Kevin Jones, Susie Smith, and Ng, just like this data. If I change this data, like I alphabetize the data that I uh, populate the list with, then it also becomes alphabetized. So it just matches oh, the data okay. that it's set to okay. like that. Okay. Yep, you. good question. <clears throat> okay, so now that we can kind of pick and choose quickly out of a whole table and not go into the table itself, let's see how we can look up people's uh, information. So this is called a, a lookup function. And basically what it does is it looks up one value like uh, Sydney Holes so in one column, find the matching value, and then it can give back any uh, value in the same line with it in that row. So I could give back age, I could give back branch, how many clients, last sale. In this case, I'm going to choose net sales. So we can see this is xlookup. I'm going to do equals xlookup. That's the name of my function. You can see Excel always kind of uh, helps you out as you begin to make functions. So it kind of gives me a quick definition of the function. When I open my parentheses to begin putting in my inputs, it changes to say what inputs I need. And I'll explain as we go, obviously. And then the last thing, when you begin to uh, use Excel on your own and you need a little bit of extra help, you can see this is now a link. So we can click on XLOOKUP and we get a whole little help box on the side inside Excel. And let me put that away. And what it does is it defines XLOOKUP. It even has an official Microsoft video that'll like give a demo of it. It'll tell you how to make the function, what each of these little inputs is, and a whole bunch of stuff, whole bunch of tweaks and options you can do with it and some examples. So if you need help with functions, you can always uh, use this link to get the help box in Excel itself. And you can also just Google it as well. You know, how do I use Microsoft Excel X lookup, you'll find a bunch of stuff online that'll help you. So in this uh, X lookup, let's begin with input one. And you can see, unlike the basic functions we did last time when we just chose one range, we have a couple things that we need to put into these advanced functions. And each one is gonna be something uh, specific that's gonna spell out the logic of what we wanna do. So input one is the lookup value. I'm going to click on Sydney Hole because I'm looking up Sydney Hole in this table. So that's going to be my lookup value. Next is my lookup array. So that's going to be what I want to find this lookup value in. So I could select this uh, column. I'm just going to select the whole column by clicking on the A itself. So I'm going to look up Sydney Hole in this column. And then what I want to do is choose which column I want to get the data back from. So if I choose on this F, what I'm gonna do is look up Sydney Hole in this column and then give back the matching value in this column. And hopefully I set this up uh, correctly. And when we do that function, we can see we get 858. Yep, so it looks like we successfully got it. And now if this was like a data dash on my Excel spreadsheet, I could quickly check on my employees Say, let me look up Alice, that's 1120. Uh, I could look up uh, Isaac, that's 1890. We'll just double check. Yep, so it's just, it's just doing that simple thing. But it's one of the most useful uh, functions uh, in any spreadsheet uh, program, actually. And then the last thing we can do, we can just tweak this like we did it above. We'll come back to my home tab, and I just want to say what type of data this is. So I'm just gonna make it, you know, money like that. And I could drop off the uh, decimals if I want, just to make it look like that. So that's Excel, uh, Excel's X lookup. Pretty useful, especially in combination with the uh, dropdown. And we'll be using these uh, all through this uh, little uh, class. 
Uh, next, uh, I just want to mention uh, that we can, in addition to getting back uh, one data point that matches it in the table, we can also uh, get back multiple at once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one last example of the same thing. Um, what I can do is I can just copy and paste this, and then I get my same dropdown. Instead of setting it up, going back into data validation again, let me expand this. I can just copy and paste it, and then I get my dropdown again. I'm going to set up one last X lookup function as a little bit of practice with just one little tweak. We want to get back a bunch of data in the end, not just one, uh, but we only want to use one function to do it. So my lookup value is going to be uh, this name, in this case, Isaac. My lookup array, that's going to be the column that I find that lookup value in. So that's going to be my uh, salespeople uh, column. And now, last time we just chose one column, we chose net sales. But this time, I'm going to click and hold and drag my mouse. And then if I did this uh, correctly, I'm doing B to G. I can close that. We can see it automatically uh, looks up the initial value. And then what it's doing is it's spilling these values into the adjacent, adjacent uh, blank cells. So if we look up at the top, this is kind of grayed out. And that's because my function is just in this one cell. And then it's kind of spilling out these values into this cell, all based on this one. So you can use this how you want. You can just get a one data point. You can get a couple. You can get all of them. And then obviously, we have to uh, touch this up a little bit, like we've been doing. But you can see with just a couple of quick tricks, we can do easy lookups uh, on the uh, Excel spreadsheet without getting bogged down in this huge table, constantly alphabetizing it, looking up people you know, manually by eye. Really useful tool. And we'll use those again on the next page. Uh, but now I just want to do a quick uh, demo of uh, handling duplicates uh, in Excel. Uh, we'll see this will be useful if we get to this last thing I said we'd get to if we have time. When we have raw data, we not only have to clean it up, but we might have duplicate data. We, we can see I got Kevin Jones at the top, and I accidentally have him again at the bottom. So you might need some duplicate checking just to see that you haven't done the same thing twice, something like that. So this is always a useful skill. So we'll do three things. We'll see uh, how can we just check if we have duplicates? How can we automatically delete duplicates without doing it by hand? And how can we do a type of data validation to prevent us from typing in a duplicate we already have? Uh, so to check duplicates, what we can do, let me expand this, is we'll actually go to the uh, home button. Then we'll go to uh, conditional formatting on this. And then we want to go to highlight cell rules. And we can see all the way at the bottom is duplicate values itself. And if we click on that, we can see it sets up a lot of things. It's saying what it's being applied to. And that's just the cells that are highlighted when I click these buttons. Um, it's going to highlight cells with duplicate values. We could change it to like uniques, blanks if we want, but we chose duplicates. And then we can just choose a quick uh, style to apply to it. Since I don't want duplicates, I'm going to choose this kind of red one, which kind of says I don't want this. And then I can just click done. And we can see I kind of have a conditional styling on this section of the page. Anytime I have multiple things twice or three times, it's now going to highlight it. So if I change this, uh, it's going to vanish. If I add a duplicate back in, those will highlight. If I uh, add in something like that, then I get them all highlighted. So this you might want to like apply to a table that you have, uh, maybe in a unique column like names or like client IDs, anything that you need to do it with and just leave it set up and it'll automatically toss out a flag if you do a duplicate, if you didn't want to. Uh, next we'll see, uh, so this is just how to check it, but it doesn't actually do anything with the duplicates besides kind of highlight them. How can we automatically uh, delete them? 
sorry, Matt, a yeah. question again, please. Uh, so for taking these duplicates, you referred the last uh, worksheet, right, in this Excel? I mean, where it is checking the duplicate, how, how you found the duplicate that I understood, but yeah. wh wh which uh, data it is referring to? So when I did it, I did, you know, home conditional highlight duplicates. And when I did those buttons, you can see that I have this little range highlighted. So it's only checking duplicates within these five cells. Oh. So you can see if I uh, do something like this, this is outside my duplicates check. Uh, let me change this too. So this won't highlight because the range is kind of what I selected like this when I went to apply the style. Oh, so it all depends. You, yeah. you took us to the last tab, last worksheet, but it is doing the duplicate check right, right for that data, right? Right on that. Uh, yep, you can so see when I put my mouse on top of the rule that I have, it's kind yeah. of highlighting this, uh, this block of five cells. So it's oh. only gonna check in this. In the if block you, of five cells, okay. Yep, okay. Yeah, if you wanted to apply this to a whole table instead of a little block, you might do something like highlight the whole column. It's up to you. But yeah, it's just depending on which data that you selected. Okay, got it. Thank yep. you. Thank you so much. Okay, so that shows us if we have duplicates, how can we uh, delete them if we have them? We can see in this one, we have John twice. So again, I'm going to highlight which cells, which range of cells I want to do the check and delete on. And then I'm going to go back to uh, going to go back to my data, and we can see quite nifty. Um, remove duplicates is its own little button, so I can just click on this. Uh, basically, it's set to go. Um, what I might want to do. Oh, it looks like I did it. So let me show you that again. So I clicked it too quickly. So data, remove duplicates. If I highlighted a whole table, you know, multiple columns, I would choose which column I want to check that I have duplicates in. You know, if I'm checking this table to see if it has duplicates, I might highlight this whole table because I want to delete the whole row if I have a duplicate. But I want to choose um, only check if I have a uh, salespeople duplicate. I don't want two Kevin Smiths. Because uh, that's probably a uh, mistake in the uh, data entry. But I don't want to say only don't allow duplicates in the age column because I could have multiple people at the same age. Obviously, with region, lots of people in the same region. So I don't want to check duplicates in that. So when you uh, apply to check duplicates, you basically want to check. I just want to check the duplicates in this column, and then you can apply it. It says one duplicate found and removed, and all these unique ones remain. And we can see if I undo what I just did, we can see it found the second John and deleted it. So that's how we can uh, uh, delete duplicates uh, pretty easy. And then last, let's see how we can uh, just totally prevent duplicates. Maybe we don't want to deal with these two things. We just want to stop people from uh, putting bad data in from the get go. So with this one, we can, again, highlight which uh, cells, which column we want to prevent duplicates in. We'll go again back up to data, and we'll go back again to data validation, just like we did when we made a dropdown, except we chose a list then. And then this one, I actually have it set up. So instead of giving me a blank option, it's actually telling me what I already have applied to this Excel uh, range. And you can see this is kind of the complicated function that you need. Um, it's built in. I can click OK. Let me show you what it's going to do if I try to put in John again. It's going to say someone set up a data validation rule. Um, it tells me what the, what the function was. And it won't let me do that. It'll let me do something almost like that, obviously, uh, but not an exact uh, duplicate. Now the question obviously is, you know, how did I come up with this? It's quite complicated. You know, what is all this doing? Uh, but in this case, I would say we don't even need to understand what this is. 
because even when I set this up, I didn't know how to do that off the top of my head. What I did is I just went to Google. I just typed in Excel data validation, no duplicates, chose the top entry. And I got a nice quick Excel page, free little demo. And we can see they tell me go to data validation, do all this. And we can see they have the same exact function that I'm using. Obviously, the inputs don't match because I have a different table, but it's the same equals count if something something equals one. Uh, so the same setup. And this kind of explains what it's doing. Uh, but the point being, you don't need to know exactly how to do everything yourself. You can just look things up and you can still use things that might be a couple steps beyond what you can do yourself. But as long as you can look it up and confidently, you know, employ what you find online. Uh, you, you can you know, freely do that, and that's a good uh, thing to do, being able to look things up and apply uh, what you can find online. Uh, so those three in combination, you can use them if you need. Uh, and it's good if you have a spreadsheet that you want to uh, keep the data clean. It's also good if you have a team spreadsheet and you have a lot of people putting in data. And uh, so that's a lot of people that could make mistakes. So it's good to kind of do these uh, data validations uh, to keep all the data clean because a lot of people can make a lot of mistakes. So just some tricks that you can uh, use if it applies to you. Uh, next, I'm just gonna mention uh, three things quickly. We won't spend too much time on them. Uh, but one of them is actually a way to get unique values, meaning drop the duplicates. Um, but instead of taking the original data and deleting the duplicate, something like that. We can leave the original data and just get a second set of that data using a function, uh, but only getting the unique value. So let me show you what it looks like. It's just called the unique uh, function and it gives back the unique values from a range. I can open it up. We can see it's kind of as easy as a simple sum function. You just give it one set of uh, values. So it's gonna say, let me get only the uniques from this, close it. And then we can see just like above when we did the X lookup and we kind of spilled values out. In this case, we can also just do one function up in the top. And then these ones kind of spill out depending on this one. So you'll need to leave blanks beneath it. But now we have a copy of this data. And we can see this, this is now uh, dependent on this. It's a cell reference to these ones. So if I, you know, change this data, this is going to change as well. If I keep changing it, it'll keep changing. Just like this. And you can see uh, quite a useful function. Maybe you need the duplicates, but you just want to see the unique values. You can use this. Another function that you can use is this one, the name kind of gives away what it's gonna do. And it lets you take some data and it kind of gives out a second list of it. Uh, in this case, alphabetized, if it was quantities, it would be high to low, low to high. So these two, uh, quite easy to use, uh, but it's a good idea to know that you can, instead of uh, changing, deleting, alphabetizing the original data, you can just get like a second copy of it. We can open up a second spreadsheet tab, uh, just use the unique function on all the data in the raw data tab. And then we can just use some analysis on that unique values so that we still have all the original values. And same with this. And we can even uh, combine these if we want. So instead of just alphabetizing it, we can stack functions. So if I do this, I'm just gonna wrap my kind of alphabetizing function in my unique function. And now it's gonna do both of these at once. So it's gonna alphabetize it and only get the unique. So we only get Jen once, we only get Thomas once, and we get Tom, and it's alphabetized. Uh, so this is just one last thing uh, you can do. And then finally, uh, this one, I'll just quickly show what it does. Instead of only finding the uniques, instead of alphabetizing, you might want to get some subset of the data, you know, with obviously without deleting the subset of data from the actual data. So you can use uh, this function. And this basically 
takes, uh, in this case, some table, and it applies uh, some condition to which data that it pulls out of it. So in this case, if only finding the people above age 59, we could use this to find only the people in the Midwest branch, only the people with some sales above a specific amount. And obviously this function is a little complicated and I'm actually gonna go on now to the uh, chunk of the class, which is all these conditional functions. And then we'll see kind of the logic of how you can make that one. Uh, and you can go back to that one if you need it. Uh, but just a couple of things uh, you can take a look at. Uh, but now we'll get into the uh, main function. So on this page, just a copy of the same data. You can use functions, obviously, that use data on different uh, pages of the, uh, of the uh, spreadsheet file. But just for convenience sake and to be able to quickly see it, I just put a copy of it on the same page. So let's take a look at some of these uh, conditional functions, which again, allow us to do some like selective analysis and things beyond just the simple summing and getting the average, those basic functions. So you can see I have some demos set up and then some practice space beneath it. Uh, in these two columns, I have uh, some drop downs again and some X lookups, uh, but we'll be uh, making a function in the last column. So taking a look at this one, and kind of the most basic uh, conditional function is the if function. And what it basically says is if X, you know, if something, then Y, else uh, Z. So if we take a look at this one, that's the example, and I click it to see which data it's using, we can see what it's doing is it's saying if, and then it's some logical test, and it's saying if this cell meaning the sales data they have, is above or equal to 1,000, then value if true, print out pass, else if false, print out fail. So we can see this is above 1,000, so we get pass. If we change this, let's see if we can find someone that uh, isn't doing so well. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, yeah, so when we get to Nate, now, uh, now we get the fail because this is not above or equal to 1000. So we get the value if false. Uh, so you can see uh, how useful it is to know these drop downs and the X lookups. Now we can do this whole little uh, data dash on a separate page if we want to quickly not only select some data, look something up immediately, but kind of tell us something automatically, do some calculation uh, quickly. So let's do a live example of it, type it out as we go. Um, again, we can just, we can copy and paste this dropdown. We can also uh, use the autofill handle. So we looked at that last class. So what we can do is just select these two uh, cells, just pull it down, and then we get a copy of them again. So I can do that. And then let me choose uh, Kevin. We can see that's his uh, data. So this is uh, correctly applied, this next lookup. And now let's do one of these uh, if functions. So we'll do equals if. Excel is going to tell us it's going to check if a condition is met. And it gives back one value of true, a second one if false. Uh, to begin, you do the logical test. So I'm going to say I want to do some logical test based on his sales data. And I'm going to say maybe uh, maybe if I'll do the opposite if less than one thousand uh, print out uh, fail else print out pass and we'll put the text in quotes uh, we need to do that so we can see logical test value if true value if false so now we can see uh, Kevin Jones is passing he has above a thousand. If we change this, uh, let's see, uh, to Nate, we see we get uh, the fail again. Uh, so pretty basic function, but it's a good uh, practice at these kind of advanced functions that use conditions and things. And I'll leave this practice space to you uh, if you wanna uh, come back to this. Uh, next, 
uh, we'll use uh, two functions in combination. We'll use the if function, which we just looked at, and then we'll use the and function. Um, and what we basically do in this is we do two tests at once, and we have to pass both tests. That's what the and function does. It's, it says uh, you need to pass both of these. Both of these logical tests need to be true, and then you get the pass fail in the if. Oops. So we can see uh, basically what it's saying is if someone has uh, above 15 and less than 2000, let's promote them. And uh, if they don't hit that range, uh, I just said uh, print nothing. So I just have a blank uh, piece of text. I just have the quotes with nothing inside of it. Uh, so let's, let's set this up. So again, I'm just gonna basically copy and paste this so I have my easier dropdown. I'll keep, uh, let me go back to pick someone. I'll go back to uh, Austin Brown and we'll see if we can match this one. So what we need to do is we'll open up a function by typing in equals. We wanna begin with the if function, but then this is when we can nest two functions. So instead of doing one logical test, and basically what a logical test does is it's some check that gives back true and false. So instead of doing one logical test to give back true and false, we can use the and function inside of this. And we can see what it does is it checks, you know, all of the logical tests and it gives back true if all of them pass and it gives back false if all of them pass, if uh, any of them fail. We need to pass all the tests. And we can see we get logical one, logical two. Same thing if we just had the if, we would have logical one, but and lets us do multiple logical tests because we want to check everything at once. So we can begin to set up the logical tests. Let's say that's less than 2000. We do a comma between the logical tests. And then we can click on this again. And we'll say above or equal to 1500. So now I've got my two tests. That's my inside and function. And then I can close my parentheses on the and function. And then we can see, I just go back to completing my if function because the whole and thing is just one component of the if function it's nested inside. So once I finish my and function, I'm just back inside my uh, if function. And then I just get back value if true and value if false. So I'll say uh, promote, and then I'll say, maybe I'll leave it blank, and maybe I can put not promote instead this time. And then we can see as we uh, fiddle with this, uh, we get these values like this. Except in this case, we check two things at once. Uh, in this one, we basically said, uh, if someone is above a thousand, they pass. And that means everything, 1,000, 1,001, 100,000. But in this case, we wanna do a specific range. So we need to do kind of two tests to see only people above this amount and below this amount, this specific set. So that's when we can use the AND function. Uh, any questions as we, you know, we still have a couple of these left, but any questions just in the beginning as we do these complicated functions about you know, nesting functions, logical tests, anything like that. I'm gonna do any of these again. If not, we'll just keep going. And these all use the same things we've been doing. So we'll, we'll keep at it, but if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, let me uh, copy and paste my dropdown in XLOOKUP again. So I can link all these things in this kind of dependent chain of functions and dropdowns and things. And now uh, in this case, uh, instead of doing an and, you know, checking two things to be true, <clears throat> I'm going to do uh, kind of the opposite. I'm going to say uh, if x or y, then z. So I only have to pass one of the tests uh, to uh, be the true in the if uh, function. If all of them fail, then I get the fail statement in the uh, if function. But if any of them pass, I uh, pass. Unlike this one, when I have to pass all of them. So let's see what we did. So we said, if someone is above 2000, 
uh, in sales, I want to review them. And in that case, it might be a good thing and maybe review them to see if they need a promotion. Uh, but then as a second logical test, we say, if someone else is a below 750, we'll use the same text, we'll review them, but that probably means to review them to see if we can help them you know, make sales. Obviously, someone can't be both above 2000 and below 750. So again, we only need to pass one of these tests independently, unlike last time. Uh, so let's go ahead and set this up. We'll go if, and then if we just did one logical test, we would do this. But now we can use this inside function. And it basically just lets us do a bunch of logical tests instead. So we select the data point that we want to do. Um, I'm going to say above or equal to 2000 comma to go to my next logical tests test. And we can see as we kind of fill out this function, Excel kind of automatically says which statement I'm on. So as I add a comma, it says now I'm on logical two. So I'll pick this one again and I'll say, what did we say? Below 750, that's also going to be uh, the, 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 uh, the test. Let me close my parentheses and we can see as I do that, I kind of finish this inside uh, function and I go back to my function and add my comma. And then I just do the same thing as always, value if true. Let me do a review, value if false. We'll just leave it blank. So we'll just do open quote, end quote. And then I'll just put on my last parentheses and we can see the little if box goes away as I close it, meaning my function's all good. I opened and closed all my parentheses and then I can uh, do it like that. And then we'll just do a couple of checks. We'll check uh, Emma Davidson. Uh, we can see it's blank, which is good because she doesn't pass any of these tests. Uh, let's go to Tony. He's below 750, so he's a review. Uh, we'll go to Liz. She's uh, in the green. We just did Tony. Uh, Nate's okay. And uh, Steven is doing amazing. So he's also a review, but probably in a, in a positive way. So that's how we can uh, do that one. Uh, this last one is uh, it's called the ifs function, IFS. And it basically does a whole chain of uh, logical tests at once. So if we look at what this uh, function is doing, let me put that up. It basically says, uh, give me a logical test and then give me a value to output if that test is true. If it's not, instead of printing out a false value, give me a second logical test to check. If that's true, let me get, give this value. Uh, if it's false, let me do uh, an additional logical test and I can keep going as, as long as I want. Okay, if that's uh, true. One last logical test and the value if that is true. So we can do a whole chain and we can see I'm kind of grading these salespeople if you did a, uh, maybe you need to grade some students exams and you put in the, uh, all the uh, tests into the grade book, you can kind of automatically use this to do, to assign like A, B, C, D uh, to the grades, things like that, that kind of thing. So we'll pull this down. I get my dropdown, easily pick my data, automatically look up uh, some piece of data. And now let's set up this ifs function. So I, F, I see my ifs, I see my if function. If I add the S, I'm going to check multiple conditions. So we can see the difference between these. If just checks one condition, ifs checks multiple conditions. And we can see what this class is kind of getting to. We can see kind of all the functions um, have uh, this type of uh, thing. So we have some if, and some ifs, max if, min ifs, count ifs, average ifs. So with all these basic functions, we can uh, do some logical tests, maybe multiple logical tests, and then do something. With these, we'll do some kind of calculations, some summation, some averaging, dependent on condition conditions. Um, unlike this one, when we just print out some value. Uh, so let's finish up this one, and then we'll get to kind of the summing and averaging and things like that. So we'll open up uh, ifs. Uh, we can see it again, just logical test and then value if true. We'll just copy what's above. So we'll say, I'm going to check 
this piece of sales data against some logical test. If it's above 2000, comma, uh, put promote in this cell. If not, let me comma and let me do a second logical test and value if true. So I'm just gonna click on this cell again. I'm gonna say above 1500. Uh, let's see, I guess I said promote and uh, definitely promote, I guess is the way I differentiated it. Um, L21, uh, let's see, above 1000, that will be okay. L21, and now since I'm on my last one, instead of doing above, you know, 500, I'm gonna say less than or equal to 1000. So I kind of catch all cases. And then I'm just gonna do one last little grade. And then I can just uh, close my function. So we'll notice with this one again, I kind of flipped the sign so I could catch all possible values, any value that someone might have from 10,000 to 2000 to 1600 to uh, 1021 all the way down to uh, one or negative 50, I can catch everything. If I uh, don't have a logical test that uh, fits the data, I'll just get a blank cell. It's just not gonna spit out anything. So that's why I flipped this one. So I have to give a grade to someone depending on what they have. So we can see uh, Susie, uh, she got okay, and that's above a thousand, but less than 1500. Um, if we change it to uh, Kevin, he's the same. Anne is at the bottom. Uh, so that one's uh, pretty useful too. Uh, we just have to keep in mind, we kind of begin on the left-hand side and move to the right-hand side. So we check this value, uh, this logical test, value if true. Then we do a second test, value if that's true, and so on. So we kind of have to go from left to right, the kind of logic of how we want to check it. Okay, so all these have been uh, good practice. I mean, these will be useful by themselves. Uh, nice little uh, printouts and data checks. Uh, but now we'll get into kind of doing some actual calculation and getting some stuff uh, back. So let's look at uh, the sum function. So we know the basic sum function. We can open up sum. We can come this way, choose my data. choose my data like that. So I just chose everything. So I'm just summing the whole table. But now we wanna do that question, instead of summing everything, we wanna sum um, only the sales, let's say from some specific branch of the company. Uh, so you can see, uh, you can kind of see what's going on. We have, it looks like some uh, check in the middle. We have some uh, range and then we have a second range. So let's take a look at this in action. So we'll do equals sum, we'll do sum if, open it up, and then it gives us what we need to do. So let's go this way and choose the data that we want. So the range that we need is not the range of what we need to sum, that's gonna be the last input. We want the range of what we wanna check that second condition that we'll do in a second on. So in this case, I wanna check uh, I'm going to highlight the whole column. I'm going to check the region against some condition. So I'm going to say, check it, it is equal to the text east. And then finally, uh, comma, then I do my last one, then I do my sum range. And now I can just click this net sales column. Close my function. And then I come this way. And now we can see uh, I match you know, what it actually is. And again, when we set up these functions, we might just have to come back and uh, apply a little bit of styling to it. But we get what we uh, want. In this one, we put the uh, condition inside the uh, sum function itself. But now this is kind of always the east uh, branch total. If we take a look at a second application of the sum if function, we can see I've made a second drop-down list and I have my uh, sum if function 
pointing to this cell. So this is the condition cell, and this is based on it. So now I have a kind of dynamic tool on my uh, Excel page. I can quickly uh, get a couple of data points by using this drop down. So let's take a second uh, whack at doing a uh, drop down list. So we'll go to uh, data and we'll go to data validation. I'm going to click on the cell that I want to make the drop down. Go back to list type. And then Last time when we picked a whole list of salespeople, we kind of highlighted it on the page. Uh, in this case, I don't want to pick this whole thing because then I might get duplicates. I have all these multiple times. So since it's this simple, I can actually just type it in myself. So I'm going to type in one uh, cell value, put a comma, do a second one, do my last one. Uh, I think I have all those. Yeah. And now I could just click OK. And now if we go to this, we can see I have this custom dropdown. If I at some point, maybe the company adds a uh, region to its uh, business, uh, unlike last time when we had the dropdown dependent on these names, and if we change the names, the dropdown, it was dependent on changed. This one is kind of independent. I kind of uh, wrote in by hand all these uh, branches of the company. So if anything changes, I have to come back and kind of uh, manually edit this to kind of add, oops, to kind of change uh, who we add. So if they add a new uh, branch, I'd have to come in and do it by hand, but it's fine as it is now. So let me choose, uh, we'll choose South. And again, we'll try and uh, set up a summit function to get what it should be. Open up some if, come to my data. I see my little help uh, box floating. Um, the range that I'm gonna check the condition on, I choose my column. I'm gonna choose my uh, condition basically. And in this case, I'm gonna choose this cell. I'm gonna use that value. And then lastly, I'm going to choose the sum range. So I'm going to choose net sales. And now what's going to happen is it's going to uh, scan both of these. It's going to say anytime I see something that matches this, uh, what's hidden, but this P26 cell that I think is uh, south right now. As I see south values, I come across and I add this into my sum. I, I add that one. I add this one, I add this one, and everything else I skip. So we can click on that. And then again, we can change this, see if we did okay. And yeah, everything matches. We just have to tidy this up. And we can do that pretty quickly. We can uh, copy, copy this cell above it. And then we can paste uh, the formatting like we did in the last class. So that's gonna paste that like uh, money type uh, data that I applied to that cell. And then lastly, uh, just like we had if and ifs, we also have uh, some sum if and some ifs. So you can kind of see what's going on in this one. Instead of just checking one condition, uh, in these two cases, I'm checking two conditions. I'm gonna say only sum the salespeople's net sales of those people uh, in the East Branch and maybe above, let's see, yeah, above this age. And in the second one, I only want to get this, uh, this branch's net sales of the uh, sales made past this date. So you can see now we can be quite selective in what data we want to uh, grab and kind of calculate. Uh, because we can add a whole slew of conditions, as many as we want. We can kind of expand this out if we want. But in this case, we just have two. So we'll just do one example of this. I'm just going to copy and paste uh, these. This again is just a drop down. And this I just typed in at H. And now let's go ahead and uh, set this up. I'm going to paste this above us so we can see it. So that's 
the uh, sum ifs function that we need. So we'll do sum ifs. The only difference between sum if and sum ifs is just how many conditions we want. So in this case, we have two conditions. So we'll use sum ifs. And then it's kind of uh, the same thing. Uh, but in this case, we begin with the sum range. So I'm going to come this way and I'm going to begin with net sales this time. And then I choose uh, something like what I want to check something against and the actual condition. So I'll come back this way. And uh, my cell is hidden behind this open box, but it's P27, it looks like. And then you can see once we do one uh, range in a condition, we can just choose a second range in a second condition. So now maybe uh, looks like we want to check age. So I'm going to come back this way. I will highlight my age column, do a comma. And now we need to check a condition. But instead of just putting in the age, we need to say above that age. We can say above or equal to that. And to do that, we want to. It's a little bit confusing why we need to change how we type it in, uh, but we need to put it in quotes. So we do quote uh, greater than or equal to. Then we have to do the ampersand sign, and then we can put in the uh, cell whose data we want to use. Uh, just a little bit of you know syntax that we have to get used to, basically. But now let's see if we uh, did this correctly. And yeah, it looks like uh, we did. Again, we can just apply this style to make it look nice. And as we change this, everything else changes as well. Okay. Uh, it looks like we had a slight mistake, actually. What did we do? And we may have had a slight bug in how we set it up because these two don't match. <clears throat> we just had a slight bug, but we'll move on because uh, you have the actual example that's supposed to be next to it. Okay, so that's that. Some ifs gets, uh, it's easy to get how you make it, but as you can see, we made a bug. It gets a little bit complicated when you need to make so many uh, selections. You need to select which data you want to sum up, uh, the range, the column that you want to check some condition against, the actual condition, a second range, a second condition, so on. So it just gets a little bit unwieldy, but still pretty uh, basic at the end. Uh, and then we'll just practice a little bit with the equivalence uh, of like average count and things like that. Uh, well, then maybe we'll just do average actually quickly. So average, we know the basic one, pretty easy to use. Uh, we just choose average. And then we can choose, you know, the net sales. Although actually, I'm going to manually select this because if I select the whole column, I would actually be including this total column at the end. And I don't want to get the average plus the average of the total. Uh, so I'm going to manually unselect that. Come back this way. Uh, hmm. Let's try that again. Average. F2. Oh, you know, I think I made the mistake in the actual example. If we take a look, I did that. So let me change this one. And now they should match. Yep, so now we have a match. So the average net sales of everybody is about 1,300. Uh, but now let's do some conditional stuff. Let's find the average of just the Midwest uh, people. Um, so we could copy and paste this, but we could also just use the same dropdown. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin a function 
average if it's going to tell us how to uh, set it up. Um, let me just see. Okay. Okay, yeah, so average if, and then what we need to do is uh, choose my range against which I'm gonna check that condition. So I'm choosing the branch column, and then I'm gonna say, check this one, in this case, Midwest. And then finally, the uh, column of what you actually want to get the average of. So I'll choose my net sales, and then I'll go ahead and close my function. Come back this way. Hmm. Okay, show that one last time because I keep making mistakes. Average if choose this. My condition is this branch. And then let me choose these. Okay, yeah, it's just a long decimal point. But you now you can see as we change this, uh, this changes as well. And then again, uh, we'll actually skip doing it, but you can see just like some ifs and ifs we can just do multiple conditions as well. So if we look at this one, it's getting the average of all the salespeople uh, in the South branch uh, above the age of 50. So we take a look at that. You can see it's pulling this piece of data, pulling this piece of data. If we come to the column, we choose the two columns that it checks against. And then we just lastly uh, choose the column that we get the actual average of if we hit the conditions that we need to on this side. So that one as well. So you can see once you uh, get to know, you know the basics of a function, it's if equivalent and then it's if's equivalent, you know how to do a lot because a lot of functions have an if and an if's addition like that. Uh, and then we'll skip min and max, uh, that's kind of easy. Uh, but I do want to do the last one, which is the count function. Uh, so let me show you what this does. So if we do count, uh, we have a couple uh, count functions available to us. If we just do count, it's going to count the cells in the range that contain uh, quantities. If we count A, that's going to count all the cells that basically have any value in them, anything that's not empty. So I'm going to choose that one because I'm going to, to, going to apply this to my table of uh, salespeople. And you can see if we can quickly count up, you know, how many people that we have. A quick little trip, uh, trick that you can do if you don't want to do a whole function to do a count. If you uh, highlight some range, you can see on the bottom of Excel, it actually gives you uh, the count if you highlight something that can be like added up, you'll see that it gives you the count, it gives you the average and it gives you the sum. So anytime you make a selection, it's kind of automatically doing a quick basic uh, calculation. If you just need it for, you know, uh, convenience's sake. Uh, but in this case, we wanna kind of put it on the spreadsheet itself. Uh, next, we can see, let's see. So let's count only the people in the Midwest branch. So we'll do count, add on that if, and we just count the cells that meet the given conditions. So we choose uh, the range. So we'll say count, oops, we don't wanna count that. We want to count salespeople in uh, like the Midwest uh, branch. What we can actually do is just highlight this column. So we'll highlight that. And then we want to say, what is the condition? Well, we can check it against how many Midwest employees that we have. So we can say we have 12 Midwest. So 12 in the East as well, 11 in the South and so on. 
And then finally, we can do, again, count ifs, multiple conditions, only the people in, Midwest, uh, in the Midwest who make at least uh, 1,500 ant sales. So we'll move on uh, from this now. That's obviously the bulk of the class. Um, a lot of people don't know how to do these uh, functions um, in Excel. And they can be quite useful if you want to get beyond just using Excel as like a basic adding tool. Uh, so definitely spend some time with these. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, but if not, we'll just do a couple odds and ends at the end of the class as we move on to a little bit less dense of uh, topics. Okay. So if we look at the uh, next tab. Uh, on this one, we look at we looked at last time how we can easily make a uh, graph in Excel. Uh, but in, in, in addition to graphing uh, data, we can kind of do this quick um, styling of the cells and the columns uh, themselves. So this is called conditional styling, and it basically let me open this up. Um, apply some visual to the cell based on its value. So you can see this one, its highest value gets all the blue, and then it kind of goes down from that. And you can see we can choose um, kind of what it looks like, red and blue. If we have mixed up data, it kind of gives us a quick visual way to find like the highest point and the lowest point. Uh, so let's take a look at how we can uh, apply these. We have a whole bunch of options. Uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, so to apply it, as always, we kind of select the data that we want to apply something to. We'll come up to the home tab again. Uh, we looked at this previously, conditional. And in this one, we can see all the options that we have. We want to go to the data one. And we can see kind of what we just saw. We can choose one of these, maybe uh, green. And then it's going to instantly apply it to the data. As we change the data, if we do that, you can see it's going to uh, change as we go along. This is a quick visual way, of just kind of showing the relationship between data without making a whole graph on the side. All of these ones, just additional kind of options that all kind of do the same thing. So this one, you have all these kind of visual uh, options. So this is gonna show, you know, the least of the data, the, the highest of the data, and then kind of the midpoint. You could do any of these kind of schemes. If we go down to these ones, these ones uh, get quite cool. Instead of applying it to the whole table, this can get a little bit messy. We can do something like only highlight the top and bottom uh, two, maybe highlight only the ones above average, maybe only the top 10% uh, like that. So to do this one, come up to home. Uh, we'll go to this one, and then we get all these options automatically. Maybe this time we'll choose uh, below average. We can kind of choose which style that we apply to it. Maybe we'll do this one, and then just click done. And then that's a little bit subtle, that one, but you can see it did what we want. And then you can see if we can kind of customize uh, how we uh, do it. So on this side, we have everything above 70 if we want, everything below this, everything between two values if we want. And we can even do this with uh, text. So if we do some things, maybe if we do, uh, something like these little uh, functions, Maybe one who want to automatically apply some styling, like we can see in this one, actually, if it's fail, it's going to be red text. But if we change it to someone else, it's just going to be plain black text. So you can see we kind of kind of stack all these tools up. If we come back to this, we can highlight this uh, blank one. Uh, we'll go to highlight, and we can choose maybe a date. Uh, Next month, you can you know highlight uh, dates to come, dates in the past if you want. You can say uh, highlight anything if it has blanks. If you want to check that you have a full data set, 
again, we see that duplicate and unique values, specific text if we want. Then we can say only values uh, nine. And then we could see we get that highlighted. So you can use these, you know, obviously as you want. Same thing with these, we won't look about how to do these. Uh, but the conditional styling is a useful tool to kind of do a quick visual of like the data table itself ahead of going into like actually making full on graphs and things like that. I always use it with things like this, uh, just to kind of help visualize. Uh, next. So this page, it's, it's all filled in, but I just wanted to give you a quick like cheat sheet to uh, being able to handle dates. Uh, dates in Excel can always be a bit uh, tricky, how to like make dates, how to maybe take a date and pull its day of the week, you know, something like this. If we have a date, how do we automatically get Wednesday out of that, stuff like that. Um, so let's take a, a quick look at these. Uh, so to get today's date, it's actually a function called equals today. And this is always going to be equals uh, today. So when I come back to this Excel file in five weeks, this cell will be equal to that today. So it's always going to be changing and will always be up to date that function. Um, equals now is going to uh, the date and time. So that's always, again, going to be automatic and uh, updated. So this is that the exact time right now, the exact date. If you want to quickly type in kind of the unchanging uh, date and time, it's a quick little uh, button press that you can do. So you could do control uh, semicolon to just kind of stamp time and date. And this one won't change. So when I come back in a couple of days, this will still be 323. And again, if I do control shift semicolon, I get the time. That's going to stay that time. So if we want the values to be unchanging, we can use these little quick tips. But if we want like a live kind of clock on the page, uh, we'll use uh, these. You know, maybe you have a uh, Excel spreadsheet with uh, deadlines and things, and you always need to know what today is. You can put equals today on the spreadsheet. And then you can do something like maybe something like this to say, highlight all the items in the budget table um, in the past, maybe all of those to come, you know, things like that. So you can combine all these tools now that you have them. A couple of useful ones. Um, if you want to calculate like X business days away, you know, it's easy enough to do a date. Uh, you can add with dates. So if you do like today's date, plus five, you can still get a date, but it's not taking into account weekends. So if we use this function, um, we can say uh, as its input, give it a date and how many days away. And you can see, you can even add in custom holidays if you want, uh, but that's gonna take into account uh, weekends. So today uh, plus five, that's gonna be this day. And if you check one, two, Five, that's going to skip this weekend, so it's not counting this weekend. This one, EO month is end of month. It's going to take any date and uh, give you the date at the end of that month. So if we take a look at this, we say, uh, based on today, what is this end of the month? And I put in, it's difficult to see, but that's a zero, so that means this end of the month. If I change it to a one, we can see I get end of next month. If I want to get end of last month, I say uh, take today's date uh, and get end of last month, so that minus one. So we can kind of do that if we have like again a like a budgeting or like a scheduling spreadsheet to quickly calculate dates automatically. And then finally, we can use this e date function to say uh, not the end of the month, but you know one month uh, to come. And we can see it's the uh, it's the same date as today, but not the same month. Um, down this way, we have uh, the today function again, and you can see how we can automatically pull out things like we can pull out the day of the week it is, 
we have a couple ways we can pull out the abbreviation, the full date, just a W if we want. We can take a full date and pull out its day of the week. Uh, we can pull out the 2022 bit of it. We can pull out the month, the abbreviated month, the uh, like the count of the month. And this is all the functions that you use. Um, they look a little bit funny. We don't know what equals text and what DDD um, MMMM is, but that's just kind of the syntax to use the function. And I have it all laid out so you can just look back at this cheat sheet. And then finally, uh, like I said a couple of seconds ago, uh, you can do math with dates in Excel. So if we have like today, and then I have uh, some day, 55 days in the future, you can just do something like this, uh, that day minus this day, and you get that 55. And let me just show you. So this is what we would do today. We would do that is equal to 55 uh, days between these two dates. But I have this because I want to show you, we used this a couple seconds ago, a couple minutes ago, this ampersand symbol. And this is the uh, concatenation symbol in Excel. And it basically says this value and this value. So it's both going to uh, calculate the actual days. That's that 55 we, we saw. And it's going to put on the end of it and uh, the text days left. So I can put uh, some calculation and a label inside of the cell instead of doing, if I want something you know, like this, a label and then the data next to it. I could do this if I want all in one cell just to make it look nice. Um, and you can use the ampersand symbol to kind of concatenate two values into the same cell like that. But you just have to watch out if you use that because as you can see, what I'm trying to do in the cell next to it is say, uh, say I want to do 55 plus one. Usually we'd be able to do that. But since I have kind of uh, quantities and text in the cell, um, Excel can't do math with that now. So if I do A26 plus one, that should equal 56. But I can't do it now because this is all kinds of mixed up data. If we see like this, if I left it clean, I, I get exactly what I want. But I just wanted to show you this uh, concatenation symbol because you'll see it you know, out in the wild as you look at Excel functions a lot, um, just so you know what it is. Uh, so a little bit dense uh, doing stuff with dates, uh, but I've always found it's a little bit difficult to kind of find this all in one place and how to do all this stuff uh, specifically dealing with dates. So I just thought I'd give it to you as a little uh, cheat sheet. Any questions up till now? If not, we'll take the last you know five minutes uh, just to do this little uh, data cleanup that I mentioned at the beginning of the class, uh, but we'll still leave the time at the end to uh, do questions as well. Okay, so again, uh, we've been using this full on data table the whole time. Uh, but as I said, we can suppose that it came from a bit of messy data. Maybe we didn't put it in Excel to begin with. Someone else was giving, was uh, keeping track of the data, maybe in a CSV file, maybe just in like a Microsoft document that just had line by line all this data. And obviously, it's difficult to do stuff with this. We have a whole bunch of data. In one cell, we have the name, we have the branch, we have the DOB, which we actually wanted to make into the age. Uh, but it's a bit messy and uh, it's difficult to see how we can kind of quickly clean up this data um, automatically, uh, but it's actually quite uh, easy. So if we take a look at this, let's just write down what we want it to become. So we want it to look like this. Jones, comma, Kevin, uh, just the East branch, things like that. So if we just begin to do it by hand, we can just do one as practice. And then I'm just gonna do a second one, kind of just in case. To Smith, East, uh, 5, 1, 3, 1970. 
And now that I've done these two, um, I actually don't need to do anything else at all to do all of these ones below it. And the tool that we'll look at now is, let me find it. It's on the data tab. Oh uh, yeah, it's on the data tab. And the tool is called Flashfill, and it's kind of like an intelligent tool to kind of, it's kind of like the uh, autofill that we did last class. We looked at autofill. You can kind of see a trend that you set and kind of keep going with it. Flashfill is kind of the same idea, but it's like Flashfill, uh, autofill uh, 2.0. So what Flashfill can do is it can see some data um, next to some data and kind of see how you got to it. So it sees Jones Kevin and it sees that you pulled this little snippet out of this whole cell. And same thing with Susie Smith. And because all the data is set up the same way, when I click on the flash fill button, it can kind of continue that trend that I did. So it sees, we kind of took the little snippet, the two things at the beginning ahead of the parentheses. And uh, not only does it take the, take it out, but it kind of switches it. So instead of Susie Smith, we did a uh, capital Smith, uh, comma, capital Susie. So it's doing a whole bunch of steps at once. If the data isn't exactly all the same, it can be difficult to use flash fill. But in this case, if we look down, uh, even though the, des the uh, data is a bit messy, um, it is all consistent that way. Um, so we can do the same thing with this. We said east, east, uh, this should be Midwest, 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 West, uh, South, Midwest, East. Uh, if we do flash fill on this, we can do a couple checks. Uh, this is Midwest, that's Midwest, South and South. So because the data is all consistent, we can use this convenient tool to clean it up. And then the same thing with this last one. We can flash fill that. Just do a couple checks, 323, 1973, um, 11.5, 1980, 11.5, 1980. Yeah, so flash fill is a convenient tool. Um, and this is useful a lot if you uh, pull data, maybe you copy and paste data in a table off a website. It, again, maybe it's out of a Microsoft document. It's not gonna be in cells in columns. It's all gonna be kind of pasted all at once in one column and you need to kind of spread it out. So you can do that uh, this way. So that was uh, flash fill. And then we could also do it a second way. Um, we could also do it text to columns. If we take a look at this data, it's kind of in CSV, uh, the CSV shape, comma separated values. So if you have a CSV file, uh, you can easily make it into kind of Excel columns and rows. And Excel has a button in the data tab called text to columns. And if we click that, it's gonna separate everything in one cell based on some uh, delimiting point. So you can see, uh, this is the data that we have now. And we kind of need to choose how we want to space it out. So we can say, we want to space it out at comma. So we can choose commas. And then it can easily split it at the comma. If we want to, uh, we could do like, oops. We could do a, uh, a uh, colon like this. And then we split up uh, these two as well. And then we can apply that. And then you can see we split it up a little bit. If you have a truly CSV file, that would handle completely. Uh, but we went with the flash fill way uh, because we had kind of a specific way that this data was set up. And this could easily uh, handle it that way. And then we can take this data and you know, pretty it up and make a nice table out of it like that. Okay, so that is uh, the class. Um, the last two uh, sheets that I have, uh, it's just some practice. If you want to you know, apply these skills, I have the table of data again. I have uh, some questions to do. As you uh, fill these questions in, you can say, you know, total sales, you come and try and uh, get the correct answer to it. As you fill in uh, this side, 
uh, in this side will show up uh, both the function that you should use to get it and the actual value that you should get as well. So as you, you know, type stuff into this, if you get it wrong, you'll still see it. If you get it right, you'll still see it. So you can get the solutions in this side. And now you'll know how I did it. I just did a little uh, if uh, function. And I basically said, if this is blank, uh, put nothing. So this is blank, so it's left blank, that's true. But if it's anything else, if it's not blank, then I put in the actual value that it should be. So that's how I did that little bit of magic. So this is a little uh, quiz you can look at and uh, test what we did today. And then finally on the last page, I just made a whole bunch of uh, sample data. I've always found it's difficult to find sample data when you wanna practice Excel stuff. So I have a whole bunch of columns and you know anything that you wanna practice, you can uh, use this uh, with it. Okay, so if you guys have any uh, questions, you want to show anything again, you have any tangential Excel questions, I'd be happy to uh, answer them now. But if not, uh, thank you all. Uh, and you can, you can go ahead and uh, sign off if you don't have any questions, but. I have a few quick questions. If yeah. Is okay. yeah. So which version of Excel you showed us? Like, uh, is there yeah. a version or? So I am using, so you can see this is actually a, uh, a website. Uh -huh. This is what I talked about in uh, the last class. When you make a uh, Microsoft Outlook email account, kind of the equivalent of a Gmail account, you actually uh -huh. get access to a whole bunch of free online applications. So when you have a uh, Microsoft Outlook account, just like Google Drive, and you can log in and use Google Sheets and Google Docs, Microsoft actually gives you the free online editions of Excel and Skype and kind of all the equivalents of the Google Drive suite, which I know a lot of people know, but Microsoft also has its own free suite of apps. So you can get Microsoft Office free and use it online. You can get free phone apps to use it uh, that way. It's just the desktop downloaded editions of these that you need to uh, pay. So, so yeah, I'm this, wondering, getting Excel in that way, the way you just showed us, like yeah. through um, like uh, account, right? OneDrive. Yeah, OneDrive. Yeah. Outlook account, right? Like we have Google Drive like that. So yeah. that as opposed to getting Microsoft 365 already having Excel, what is the difference or if there is any? So it's mostly all the same. So this one is the online edition. So you need like web access to use it. You need, you know, Wi-Fi or something. The only difference beyond that is the free web edition of Excel has a little bit less tools and cool things that you can use because obviously they want you to pay to get the, uh, the paid one. Uh, but besides those couple of advanced tools, they hold back behind the paid wall. The main difference is mostly just kind of the visuals of what it looks like. It's all the same functions, all the same ways that you set up, you know, tables and things. It's basically just going to be the kind of the look of the uh, of Excel itself. That's the main difference between them. Oh, okay. Because yeah. uh, because uh, that OneDrive, this sample thing you gave me, I was able to open in my Excel, which is installed through. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, all, it's all Excel. You can use the same uh, Excel files in like Excel 2016, uh, Excel online. The only thing you need to watch out with is if you have an old edition of Excel on your PC, maybe like Excel 2010, then it's the old one and you won't see some of the new things that you see in the web Excel because this is, has the most updated things. Uh, so that's the only thing. If you have an old edition of Excel, you might see a little bit less uh, cool buttons and maybe a little bit less functions because they add new functions as time goes on. That's also the, the slight thing, but it's mostly yep. kind of visuals. Uh, I checked the version. I have 16 point something, but yeah. uh, that is pretty new, I guess, I believe. But yeah, I never used the flash function you showed us uh, today really excel is so powerful 
Yeah, I can do a lot. Yeah. Yes, feel. Yeah, right. That is so powerful. Thank what of you you. L-O-R-A-A-V-E-R-Y-I-L-O-R-A-I-V-E. Uh, Informative. N-E-S-S-I-O-N. Okay. Uh, I don't know what that was. <laughs> Maybe you have like voice activated or something or somebody. It was, it was someone else. I had, to mute, uh, yeah. I had to mute someone. If you have a question and you can't talk out loud, you can always put it in the chat. Uh, okay. Uh, keep an eye uh, on the chat. Uh, last question. The very first thing that uh, dropped down on the name, that was the least function, right? Yep. Yes. I can, you want me to show you one last time? Oh, please. If you... Yep. So we can choose the cell that we want to make the drop down in. Mm -hmm. uh, let me uh, expand my ribbon. And then, yeah, we go to uh, data, data validation. I choose allow. Uh, something out of a list. And then in this box, I choose uh, the values I want in that list. And then I can just come, I can kind of move my window and just click on the page itself. I want the salespeople in that list. I like that. Okay. And then click OK. And you can see, you can do these. Some additional options. You can put a little message. So when someone clicks on this drop down cell, it says, mm -hmm. you know, please choose, you know, a salesman if you want. Right, right. And you can also say, uh, instead of blocking if someone can put something else, you can just say, you know, maybe caution people. I want you to put someone out of this table, uh, but you can put someone else. So if I see, I can choose Susie Smith. But if instead I put like Apple, oh, it says someone put a data validation, blah, blah, blah. But now we can actually keep it. But it did tell me you probably don't want that value. So you can choose to block it, you can choose to allow it, but send up a message. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you. Excel is so powerful. Do you see any limitations like what Excel cannot do with data? Uh, Data-wise, like no, Excel's uh, pretty good. Um, the only thing I'll mention, like it has a ton of functions. If you go to the uh, functions tab, there's so many functions that you can do. And as Maybe you can see, looping? It doesn't have the loop capability when I'm comparing with the programming language, right? With uh, yeah, like Python. Well, the, when it does, it kind of does looping. Like if we do something like equals sum yeah. in Python, you would have to add these up one by one. But when we do something like this, it's kind of doing the equivalent of a right. loop. It right. basically right. does this plus this plus this. So it kind of does loops. Hmm. Um, so powerful. Thank you so much, Matt. Yeah, yeah, Excel is a, uh, really useful. If you don't know like an actual programming language, uh, a lot of people just think Excel is just like a spreadsheet thing, but it can do a, a ton of stuff. Any type of calculation you want, you can yeah. do in this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll do the practice. Yeah. Okay. We take okay. care. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. We okay. So that, class. Yeah. Uh, so that looks like it. So I'll go ahead and uh, end the call. Thank you. Uh, thank you all.